All right. Good evening. Welcome to Students Dominate Math. My name is Mr. Hendricks. This is a live call-in show brought to you through the facilities of Can TV. This is a touring show where we want you to call into the number 312-738-1000. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to be your math tutor for one half hour. show is very short, so uh, please call in as soon as possible. You might have a test, a homework assignment, some type of quiz or final exam, or maybe you just had a topic that you've always wondered about, and possibly um, I can help. So please call in the number and the screen and we will do the best that we can to help you understand uh, a math topic, whether it be algebra or geometry or pre-calculus or calculus. I think that I might be able to help you. And if you call in, I'll do the best that I can. If I can't help you, I'll tell you. I can't help you, maybe you should see your teacher. But in the meantime, what I'd like to do is talk about something that we're discussing with our students at Providence St. Mel. And it has to do with the combination of math and science to some extent. So what I'd like to do is present it right now. Um, it has to do with electrical circuits. But what we're going to do is, uh, came a little bit unprepared, came a little bit unprepared, but what we're going to do is talk about electrical circuits as um, and also we're going to talk about something called a logic table. This is an area that I think that we could really get our, our children involved with in a way that would be very, very inexpensive, but very much a learning experience for our children. I think we should get toys instead of all the clothes and get the nice hairdo for the birthday or Christmas or a video game. Man, how many video games do they need? Okay, let's get them something educational where they can learn and grow. And we might even be able to motivate them to um, learn and develop. And you never know, once you give a child something that where they'll learn, they'll get passionate about it, get excited about it, they don't want to put it down. And next thing you know, you've inspired a child to be um, some type of profession where they really make a contribution to the society. So all of that said, we're going to talk today about some logic, uh, what are called truth tables. Um, a truth table, let's, let's talk about it for a minute in terms of uh, something in writing, and then we'll connect it to electrical circuit, hopefully before we leave. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. Uh, something called an or truth statement, an or gate truth statement. Uh, boy, it appears as though we cannot, uh, uh oh, there we go. All right, an or gate truth statement, an or gate truth table. Or truth table, all right. I'll try to explain this as best I can. I'll try to explain this as best I can. You, you can, you're either, with these problems, you're either going to have a one, which we'll call a true statement, or a zero, which we'll call a false statement. All right? An or truth table will only produce a truth if you have one or the other. If you have one or the other, okay? Uh, we, our desire is to get something true, but an or truth table will only produce something true is if you have a one, a, a one or a zero. If you have a one or a zero, that's considered true. So let's produce uh, a little table here where we have an input. All right, we have an input. All right, and then we have an output. An output. All right, 
So if we have an input of, let's make it a little table. Uh-oh, maybe give us a little bit more space there. If we have an input of one, or let's start with zero. If we have an input of zero, if we have an input of zero and another input of zero, what we've told you is the only time we're going to get a truth with an OR truth table is if you have, the only time you're going to get a truth is if you have a one or a zero. And here you have neither. If you have, if you have a one or if you have a one or a zero, that, was, that is considered a truth. Here you have neither. You have neither. Neither of these are a one. So the output here would be false. And again, I know I keep saying the same thing over and over again, but to get a truth, you have to have at least one one, one truth. So here if you have an input of zero and an output, and if you have an input of zero and an input of one, because you do have at least one one, that would end up being a truth. Because an or truth statement, you have a truth if you have at least one truth, or at least one one. Here, if you have an input of one, and in another input of zero, because you have at least one, one, that's considered a truth. All right, so if you have this is a truth or this is a truth, you have a truth. If this is a truth or this is a truth, you end up with a truth. All right, so here, lastly, if you have that's a truth, that's a truth, you have two truths. All you need is one or the other to be true for you to have a truth. But here both of them are, so this is considered a truth. The only time that you don't have with an or, with an or truth table, the only time you're not going to have a truth is if one or these is not true. So this is a little logic. We're going to connect it to this circuit in a minute. We're going to connect this to a circuit in a minute. Now let's look at a let's look at a and truth table. Let's look at an and truth table. Let's, let's produce another truth table. This is the or truth table. Let's look at an and truth table and like I say we'll connect this to uh, the circuits in a moment. An and truth table. All right. All right. So with an and truth table, uh, this this remain it remains the same. Where we'll call a one a truth. Whenever we have one, we'll call that true, and a zero, we'll call that false. We'll call that false. All right. So let's produce another table. We have an input. We have an input, and then we have an output, and let's produce a table for this. All right, so now if the only time you're going to produce a truth here is if you have a truth and another truth. The keyword being and. The only time you're going to produce a truth is if you have a truth and another truth. All right, let's see if we can uh, produce a table for that. So if you have a zero, an input of zero or false, and another input of zero, what I told you up here, the only time you're going to get a truth is if you have a truth and another truth. Well, these are two falses. There's no way you're going to get a truth from two false inputs. How about if you have a, a false and let's say a truth. You have a false and a truth. 
would that produce an output of one or an output of zero? If you have an input where you have a false and a truth uh, for an AND table where we said both of these have to be true for you to get a, an output of true, hopefully you understand that this output would be false. <clears throat> what if you had a truth and a false? An input, uh, input that's true and another input that's false, that would be another uh, false. And the only time you'd have an input that would be true would be if both of these were true. You have this one, that's true. We call this one, that's also true. And that's going to produce an output of one. Sorry about that. You can't see. Sorry about that. If you have an input that's true here, another input that's true there, with an AND truth table, where we, we said to get an output that's true, both, both inputs have to be true. This and this at the same time have to be true to get a true. Over here, over here what we said was to get a true, either this or this has to be true to get a true. It, over here with an or, with an or truth table, this or this has to be true in order to have a true statement. Over here, this or this has to be true to get a true statement. It just turns out that both of them are. But down uh, over here, neither of these are true. This nor this is true, so there's no way that that would be true. Over here for an and truth statement, both both inputs have to be true in order to get a true statement. This and this have to be true to get a true statement, and neither are true, so that's why that's false. This and this, both inputs and, both this and this have to be true to get a true, and that's why we have a false there. This and this has to be true to be true, and neither, both of these are not true, that's why that's false. And this and this has to be true to get a true statement, and that's why we put a true statement there. Hopefully, that is clear. Hopefully, that's clear. Because what we're going to do now is we're going to connect that, that logic to a, a circuit. To a circuit. And this is what I'm encouraging parents to do. Instead of getting your children the video games, instead of getting your children a new outfit, instead of getting the children uh, whatever else, consider getting them something like a, uh, a breadboard, which is what we're about to show you, and some, uh, some wires, and we're going to have a uh, what's called an LED, a light source. And we're going to have some wires and a bunch of different things that the students, I think, enjoy. My students are enjoying playing around with this, and they're learning at the same time. All right, so we won't get into a lot of detail. We're not going to be able to get into a lot of detail on a lot of this, but uh, hopefully, to some extent, you can understand what I'm saying and consider getting it for uh, some of the children and um, at, uh, giving them an opportunity to grow in this area. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at what we have here. All right. So this is called a breadboard. I got it from Radio Shack. I got this for maybe $20, $30. So it's very, 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 very inexpensive. And we'll try to explain this as best we can. All right. So what I have here is I have a battery You've seen this kind of battery before. You've seen this kind of battery before, the door cell and everything. And this connector I got from Radio Shack. I got a package of these for about $2. All this stuff is ex super inexpensive. And you connect this to the battery source so you can take these wires here and connect it to your breadboard. Like I say, this, this breadboard was about probably ten dollars fifteen dollars something like that so what you do is 
this line right here, this with this line right here, all these red, uh, this red bar here, all of these lines are connected. All right, so you can put uh, that represents where you want to power up this whole circuit, there or this whole breadboard, I should say. Okay, we power up this whole breadboard by putting the red, the red wire here that's coming from your battery. The red wire here that's coming from your battery, you're going to connect that to the red on uh, the breadboard. And this black wire here that's coming from the battery, you're going to connect that to the blue. You can connect that anywhere along, anywhere along this line right here. That's where you're going to ground your circuit. And anywhere here, that's where you're going to put the red wire to power, to power up the breadboard, I should say. I think I said circuit, I meant breadboard. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take, I told you, all of, every wire along this red uh, line here is powered up. So now we just powered up the breadboard by connecting the battery to this red here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take this red wire here from the same line where we've powered up the breadboard. We're going to take that line, okay, we're going to take that line and power up the uh, this, what's called an ICU. All right. We're going to power up the ICU. Okay. So now that we powered up the ICU here, and you had to put this wire right here to power up the ICU, what we've done is inside this ICU, we have an OR gate, what's called an OR gate. We have the same OR gate that I was talking about right here where if you have two you have two inputs that are false you're going to produce a false you have a false and a true you're going to get a true the same or gate that we were talking about on paper is in this integrated circuit and what we are doing is we're testing this or gate uh, and we're going to connect it to what we talked about uh, with our or gate truth table so what I did was each of these leads from the ICU, I connected uh, each of these leads from the ICU. I'm going to power each of these up. I'm going to power each of these up. Put power on each of these. All right. Power on each of those. All right. All right. Put power on each of those. All right. And then what I did is I took this. I took this uh, integrated circuit, this is the input here, I powered up the line, I connected it to the ICU, and what I want you to be able to see is this leg here, that's the input leg on the ICU, the integrated circuit, the integrated circuit, that's what I mean when I say ICU. Well this is the input leg to the in entire integrated circuit right here, and this whole row here all of those, all of these are, are it, no matter where you put this wire that's powering up the ICU, you will power up this integrate, I'm sorry, you will power up this integrated circuit here. So I could put this wire here, I could put this wire here, I could put that wire here, or here, or here, oh I'm sorry. It would have to be right here, okay? So no matter where I put that wire, it would still power this integrated circuit right here. I could have put it here, or here, or here. Each of these represent the same line that's powering that integrated circuit. So these wires are connecting the actual OR gate that's in the ICU. This wire is taking this wire is taking uh, the, the output from the ICU to this, this resistor. This here is called a resistor. This here is called a resistor. I hope you can see that right there. Let's see if you can see that. That there is called a resistor. And I have this resistor in the line because this power going to the light source without the resistor, it could, it could, uh, 
it could be too much current for this light and it would blow my light out and uh, we don't want that to happen. So let's try, let's try to show you, let's try to show you for a moment uh, what this has to do with uh, what we did earlier. All right, let's do the best we can to connect this here. Oh boy. Let's see. Let me try to connect this to what we just talked about. I'm having some technical challenges here. Please be patient with me. All right. All right. Give me one moment here. Sorry about the delay here. Sorry about the delay. All right, here we go. Now, what we have right now, what we have right now is an OR gate. We have an OR gate, and we said with an OR gate, this OR gate, if you have no power, we'll call a zero having no power to the, to the, to the no power in the input here, no power in the input here, you'll get no power out, okay? And what we're trying to show you is that's the case here. These are the inputs to the gates on the integrated circuit. Uh, this is an input. Oh boy, my hand is in the way. This is an input here. This wire is an input here. This wire is an input here. And this wire is the output. All right, that wire is the output. So what I'd like you to be able to see what I'd like you to be able to see is both the inputs are not powered up because this is an input and that's an input and I've got both these wires on, on the blue, the blue strip there, which I told you was the ground. All right, so because you don't have power to either input, you don't have power to either input, that is like what we said, what we said here. If we don't have power, if we don't have power to either input, we'll get no output. And therefore, what I'd like you to be able to see is this light's not on. There is no power coming out of the ICU. But if you have a situation, but if you have a situation where you have two, what I did was I powered up. I powered up both inputs on the ICU. I put both those inputs right here and right here, so I powered up both inputs on the ICU. The light went on. And what I'm trying to share with you is here, what we said is if you have both inputs powered up, you'll get a true. And, and that's verified here. We got a true, and that's why the light went on okay that's why the light went on so unfortunately we don't have time I actually I have an AND gate as well I have an AND gate as well and what I was going to do if we had time I was going to uh, connect the AND gate so that we could show we could verify the AND gate truth table um, electronically with our circuit here but we unfortunately don't have don't have time to do that. We don't have time to do that. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick this topic up next week. Uh, I was a little bit too a little bit too talkative um, and didn't get a chance to get through as much as I wanted. But we'll be here next week. We'll be next. We'll be here next week. Uh, same time, 5:30 every Thursday. And what I hope is I'd hope we'd have more phone calls for students calling with your math questions. But in the meantime, we're encouraging all the students out there to put forth your best effort in school. If you have a question in class, make sure you ask it. Make sure you come after school for extra help if you think you need it. Um, ask questions, be vocal, and always, of course, put forth your best effort. Whatever you do, put forth your best effort and never, ever give up or quit. God bless you. Thank you for watching. 
And remember, all students can and will dominate math. Have a good evening.